Uh, welcome back. It's still um, news now on Plus TV Africa. We're just uh, taking a look at the 2022 trade finance survey and we have uh, a financial analyst with us, Abiodu uh, Oluoko. Uh, just before the break, Abiodu, I was asking uh, some of the major findings of this uh, trade survey, which revealed that 94% of exporters experience rejection of their request by a commercial bank. Is it an issue of documentation or what exactly? Thank you very much. Um, I can tell you categorically it's more of documentations because banks deal in documents and they want the whole process of export financing to be documented. So for any bank to give you a facility, they want to see um, documentation to show that you have the capacity meaning you have exported several times um, you have completed all the forms to show that you um, had a contract you completed your nxp you had your bill of lading showing that you have exported and the export proceed comes in so banks wants to see the documentation from trigger to finish and sometimes some of the customers or some of this uh, uh, exporters don't have the documentation. We want to look at the export of the item and be sure it is profitable. So we need documentation to show that you have all what we need in terms of um, capacity, which shows that you've exported before. Um, in terms of um, um, collateral, in terms of bill of lading and every other thing to show that you have exported before. We want to see it and want it documented. But unfortunately, most of the exporters today don't document some of these things and they want banks to use proxies. So it is documentation issues. Once they get the documentations right, banks will do most of the financing. Some documentation right now. I'm still looking at the 21% of the rejected export financing request, uh, which was actually based on inadequate or lack of, uh, you know, collateral security. Or some people would say that uh, most times when they approach um, financial institutions for some of uh, their requests or funding issues, that uh, the uh, the requirement of these banks in terms of uh, security are usually too high. Do you agree? Okay, thank you very much. I would say the requirements are not too many because um, banks actually lend depositors fund and want to protect the depositors fund from being lent recklessly. So uh, most of them sometimes complain of collateral and I would like you to know that collateral is flexible. It could come in, them in, in different forms. It could come in form of legal mortgage, securities. I mean, uh, when I mean securities, I mean um, either, I, I mean, treasury bills. It could come in form of uh, NISA credit insurance. It could come in form of Development Bank of Nigeria impact credit insurance. It could come in form of warehouse receipts. So these are flexible ways of providing collateral that if customers um, can combine one or two of these, the banks will be ready to finance them. Um, so collateral is a major issue, and I've just stated the flexible forms of collaterals, which banks can either adopt uh, solely or combine them to ensure that we actually lend to customers <coughs> profitably, and we ensure that we monitor the money that we've, been lent, we've lent to the customers and ensure that export is carried out and export proceed comes in and the cycle continues until we make um, many more, cost, many more right. exporters and the export proceeds of Nigeria will increase whilst we grow the reserve of the country. All right, uh, let's bring in Dr. Femi Egbeshola, now uh, president of um, Asborn, that's Association of um, Small Business Owners in Nigeria, into this conversation. Uh, we've been talking to the analyst, and he's identified the bulk of the problem. But I just want to feel the pause of exporters now, which are actually represented in your um, association. You know, major findings of the trade finance revealed that 94% of your members experience rejection. You know, and uh, uh, Oluoko has actually said that it is as a result of... Uh, documentation and the lack of uh, you know collateral security i just want to get your reactions concerning that uh, dr egbeshola yes thank you very much well uh, like you have just stated the level of rejection has been very very high when it comes to accessing finance for exports and i believe that one of the bigger reasons why it's like that is because 
the capacity of the exporters has not actually been built enough. Government particularly needs to do more in capacity building such that exporters will actually know what is required of them before they go for financing. For example, in our association, we have quite a number of rejection also. And sometimes it is because we, the exporters, are not actually prepared enough for the right documentation and the requirements that the banks may need. Aside from that too, we have also been able to see that um, the banks are also a pass to uh, financing exports. Uh, I don't really know why, but uh, many banks do not really want to support the financing of the exporters. And that is not good for our country because um, the best way to get uh, funding and resources for the country now is to go into non-oil exports. Well, we are happy that the government will introduce the, the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced the RT200 program, whereby they expect to raise about $200 billion in the next three to five years. And this has created a lot of windows of opportunities for accessing finance. But what we have also discovered during this process is that um, the requirements are cumbersome, the time frame for application to get it to know whether your application is granted or not, whether it's approved or not, is so long, and uh, there are a lot of bottlenecks. I think government needs to put in some key uh, indicator performance index to be able to monitor their policies. When government does policies in a particular sector, there is need to monitor, to do uh, monitoring of the impact and assessment of this policy, right. such that they will know whether it is actually successful or not, rather than just uh, being on the paper. As far as this RT200 uh, program is concerned, to us, we, have, we feel that um, the process has not been uh, beneficial enough to our people because we have not been actually good to, able to access uh, this funding and these windows of opportunities. Right. We also are happy that the banks now are also uh, doing some capacity building. We have quite a number of banks now ready to do uh, uh, workshops, uh, seminars, and symposia to be able to sensitize the exporters about what is expected of them when All they right, come up for funding. We want to encourage. We want to encourage quite a number of exporters to also take this advantage All right, and get to you, know Dr. what the banks require of. All right, I'll get back to you now, but just before I bring you back, let me just uh, quickly get um, the opinion of uh, Femi, uh, not Femi, rather, Abiodun Oloko. Uh, Abiodun, I really need to understand how uh, high inflation rate and um, forex have been attributed at some regions for lack of growth of non-export volume in Nigeria. Abiodun, very quickly. Thank please. you very much. You are spot on. Um, inflation has been a deterrent to a lot of exporters. So um, if you go back to the prices of agro-commodities, it has more than um, quadrupled within the last one year. So an exporter that either to now needs, say, $10 million to export a container of uh, hibiscus flour, will now be needing close to like four times of that to do the same business. So inflation has negatively affected the exporters, and uh, it has reduced their capacity to export. However, for foreign exchange, the exporter is actually benefiting from um, depreciation in Naira. So whenever exchange rates or Naira depreciates, exporter will be better off because he's going to get more Naira than if Naira was appreciating. So inflation will have a negative impact because they will not be able to export as much. Um, about a uh, foreign exchange will actually be positive for them. All right, thank uh, so you. So, it will positive impact for forex, negative impact for inflation. All right, uh, just before we go now, uh, Dr. Egbeshola, I need to understand that 57% of exporters have actually identified um, access to export finance, uh, port logistics, and delays by government agencies at the port. How do you really react to this, uh, Dr. Egbeshola? Well, um, from our side, we have been trying to see how we can um, break down some of the bottlenecks that um, our mem export members face, particularly at uh, the, the, the point of uh, sending the products to other countries. And what one of the things we have been able to do is to um, meet with the relevant agencies one-on-one -on -one to discuss with them the particular challenges that we are facing and see how we can provide solutions. We have been able to make them understand that we really need to collaborate. The business community really needs to collaborate with agencies that are in charge of exports 
for us to be able to have a seamless uh, export uh, uh, process such that um, the exporters will not be discouraged and we able to raise more revenue for the country through Forex. And that's exactly what we are on in our association right now. All right, thank you so much, um, gentlemen. Uh, we uh, were joined by Dr. Femi Egbeshola, uh, president of ASPON, that is uh, the Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria, and of course, uh, Biodru Oluoko, a financial analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time. All right, uh, moving on right now. A federal high court in Abuja has set aside its order committing Osman Baba, Inspector General of Police, to imprisonment for contempt. The court had on November 29 sentenced the IGP to three months in prison for disobeying a court order. Now, the presiding judge, Mobolaji Olajuwon, had convicted the IGP following a suit filed by Patrick Okoli, a former police officer who claims he was unlawfully and composedly retired from the Nigerian police force. However, the IGP uh, filed a motion seeking an order to set aside the contempt proceedings and committal order on the grounds that he had not been appointed into office when the case was instituted. In her ruling uh, today, the judge said there was evidence before the court that the IGP had substantially complied with the order directing the reinstatement of Okoli, who was composedly retired from the force. Thank <laughs> you.